Jesus came in to say, come home, bride. There's a, there's a time and season for all this. But uh, today, as I was listening to the praise and worship, and I was looking at everything that has taken place, uh, I said, Lord, what is so unique about this place? And uh, I heard, he said, uh, there are many women, but they are pregnant. There are many pregnancy. And he said, and your time is about coming about for deliverance. And the outcry of your deliverance, the outcry of your deliverance is going to be the great, a part of the great awakening that is taking place in the nation. And it will impart a sound from this lighthouse to all the East Coast, up and down. God is doing something new in here, and there's a spirit of resilience in this place that it will not give up. And that comes because your shepherd in, in this house, they don't run away when trouble comes. Your shepherd are the opposite of many shepherds. Because... When they see things, they speak to circumstances, and they are politically incorrect. And that's what makes them special. Jesus, when he fought against politicians and all the, what happened, they crucified him. And what happened, there's a house in here that is speaking the truth. And when I met your pastor, he's a teacher, a teacher's teacher. And when I get to know a sister and Pastor Denise, I came to know that she is a fire. She's a consuming fire. You know, you either get out of her way or get with her, you know, because, <laughs> you know, I don't go like, woof. I got one of those at home. <laughs> don't leave home without it, right? Uh, but uh, but uh, I really want to tell you, you know, this house should be about 10 times more than what it is today because this message doesn't belong to you alone. It is when we give it away to other people, God is going to bless this house further. Uh, in the early service, I quoted some statistics, and one of them was, is 95% of the church people will never lead one person to Christ. If you could not lead a person to Christ, lead a person to this house, and let the spirit of this house lead them to Christ. So only 5%. I want to engage you today and tell you, wake up. Wake up because the, the awakening is upon us. And what I talked about in the early service, you know, I, I spoke about that my wife and I, we still follow the Gregorian calendar, but we also follow the lunar calendar. The reason why we follow the lunar can, calendar because the moon shined the light that doesn't belong to him. So what happened is he shined the truth and the Jewish people became that truth. To, to be a light and salt, so, uh, salt and light for this culture. So Jesus said, salvation comes through the Jews. And so what happened is we are grafted into them, you know, and this month that we are celebrating, it's called the month of Tishri. The uniqueness of the month of Tishri is it's a, it's a, uh, it's a month of, this is when we begin something new. This is when we come into new beginning that we have not been this way before. This is, you know, when God did amazing things. There so many things happened historically. This is where the exchange between Elijah and Elisha. This is when the Bible was, uh, you know, introduced in that time. This is when so, you know, like the two tablets. So many things happened. And, and, and the, the people who associate with this month, Ephraim, the, the sons of Joseph. Uh, and and why, why they are so unique to this? Because... God grafted them into the tribes of Israel, and they had the, the, the same inheritance, but they didn't have only the same inheritance, but they have the inheritance that was given to them through Joseph. So this is a month of the double portion, it, and depending on how you cross, how you move, and how you operate, God is going to operate in your life. So if you repent and move forward, and you, you establish your way in the Lord, God's going to bless you in a double portion in this month. Why? Because this is one Joshua and Caleb crossed from, from, uh, from the desert into the promised land. And what's so unique about all this, this is a month of consecration. And what's so unique about the consecration, you could not cross anywhere without being consecrated because you're crossing into something is not real. If God is not with you, then it is not real. 
how do we know this? When Moses encountered God on the mountain, what happened, the first thing, you know, we need to understand, you know, when he encountered God, what happened? He wanted to see the fire. But the word of God says, when he turned, everybody say, when he turned, God spoke. This month is when we turn to God. When we minister to God, God will speak. This is a time where the Father imparts his blessing. And so what happened is, when he did this, the first thing God said to him, Moses, take off your shoes. Why would God want Moses to take his shoes off? Is it because that they are GQ or not GQ? Or are they because it's really holy ground or whatever? What difference does it make? It is a desert. But when Moses stepped out of his shoes, God stepped into Moses' shoes. Because when Moses obeyed, God answered. And when God stepped into his shoes, the next thing he said to him, every ground you stand on, I will give it to you, declares the Lord. Every place you go, I will be with you, declares the Lord. And when you go through the desert, I will give you water from the rocks and manna from heaven because I am with you. And so what happened is this is the month where we relinquish our life to Christ. And we say, come, Jesus, behold. And, and so there are feasts. And now we are in the 10 days of awe from Sukkot all the way to the end of the month. And this is very important that you minister to God. This is not about asking for yourself, but ask for the Lord. And we're saying this. I want to make an invitation. If you have not made your peace with God, if you have not given your heart to God, and you say, today, I want to offer my heart to God as an offering sacrifice. If this is you, say, this is me. You don't have to get out of your chair. Thank you. Thank you. Two hands. Anyone else? There's something special happening in here. Anyone else? Thank you. I see your hand. That's three. That's a good number. Okay. It's an open heaven right now. Heavenly Father, for those who put their hand up right now, we stand with them in spirit and truth, Father God. And we loose and release the spirit of adoption of Jesus Christ upon them, Father God, that they are infilled with the Holy Spirit and with fire and power, Father God. The fire, Father God, to destroy every element, Father God, that hold them from moving forward. And the power, Father God, that will enable them to go to places where their family were not able to go before. So, Father God, I thank you for the spirit of prophecy will come upon them. And the spirit, Father God, of this hour that God held for the latter days, that keys will be given to them and divine understanding. So, Father God, uh, everybody pray with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I receive you. Come to my heart. Live inside of me. I give you my life. I give you my will. I give you everything. Take it and make it a blessing. I don't know what to do, but you know what to do with me. Because the day when you created me, you gave me life and future. So today you are my hope. So I put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whew. Hallelujah. Who was here in the first service? Oh, come on, y'all. Okay, who was not here in the first service? Whoa, get up and leave. <laughs> Why weren't you here the first service? It was good, but this one's going to be gooder. Yeah, I'm learning, learning real English. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, start the, the PowerPoint, please. <sighs> the second one, please. Second, you know, uh, we must understand you know, as long as we are on earth, we are not from this kingdom. We are from the kingdom of heaven, and we are at war. Who are we at war with? The deceiver. Who is the deceiver? The one who came to steal the inheritance. And we're going to talk about him a little bit. And we're going to talk about how he is in the business of stealing inheritance still. And so, um, and so therefore, to know the nature of... The, the power in defeating, you know, the, 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 uh, his ability to recognize 
to recognize him, his nature, his weapon, and everything that he has, his strength, we need to know how he played his game and how he played those different people. There are 7,000, I mean, there's 6,600 uh, group left in the world, unreachable groups. These could be reached in the next seven years. You know, this is where the, you know, the word of God will come to fill the earth from end to end. This is, you know, so it's coming about. And what we do today will affect future generations. Because this is not about you learning. Because here's a word for you. If you receive this information, you keep it to yourself. What happened? This is going to be a stillborn baby. This is going to be a stillborn baby. It will pain you and it will not, you know, help you. What you need to do is to take this because what we need to understand is, next play please, uh, is what's on, what is God's agenda? Many times we look at God's agenda and what we think or what we suspect. Some of us look at the prophets, some of us look at pastors. But there's a special place because when God created you, he created you for a purpose and for divine hope. You know, and so therefore what happened is there is a special code written for you. That code will affect everybody around you if you complete the purpose of God in your life. So what happened is when you engage God, he said he searches the heart daily. So why he searched the heart? Because he is he's looking for the intimacy in that heart. Did this heart arrive yet to receive that person? You know, and, and so what happened is and to receive what's on God's heart and not his agenda, because an agenda is one thing, but his heart is another thing. This is, comes through intimacy. And when he releases that intimacy through you, he will give you keys. He will give you wisdom. He will give you spirit of prophecy, spirit of healing, depending on what is your calling, the hope of your calling in your life. That, that, that power, that you know, gifting will accelerate to new level that you have not been this way before. And we are in the age where we're crossing from the desert into a special place, which is uh, into the promised land. But it will not happen without fighting the giants first. And to fight the giants because that's what they hold, the blessing and the promises that God has for you. Okay. Let's go over this for the sake of people who did not hear this. In the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, the word of God talks about season, time, for every purpose under heaven. So God purposed everything from the beginning to the end. He wrote the story and he said, I know the future from the past. Why? Because he declared it. And Jesus Christ declared the past from the future. That's when he became the Alpha and Omega. This is when he became the Aleph and the Tav. So that is the, the completion. And so now what happened is when we moved to Genesis 1 and 4... We find out that, you know, God, you know, spoke and here and he talked about the ferment of heaven and, the, the, you know, and how he divided everything and how he created time, night, days, years, season, everything. He created that specifically. Why did he do this? So we can learn. So we can learn and know that what made the tribe of Hazakar so special is because they want to learn about God and they were listening to what the Spirit of God saying and they were engaged. The Word of God says, my people perish for the lack of knowledge, not the knowledge that they did not have, but the knowledge that they refused to have. And why do we read the Word of God? Because the Word of God is alive and releasing fresh manna every day. Yesterday he told you the one story on it, tomorrow he will tell you a different story than that because the Spirit of God moved already. He, you know, you may be standing in a river, but the water has already passed. The water you're standing in is no longer the water that you were in. So we have to be moving in the will of God, in the light of God. And that is a speed. Only Him can accelerate us to this. The third level, the third, you know, uh, the third things, you know, I took this from Exodus because God was so talking about, you know, in that day I will set apart the land of, you know, Goshen. I will do this. He said, in that time. God talks about time to come and what he's going to do in that time. He set all this time specifically for a season to happen. In the, in the, in the Aramaic, at that time, it's called Maw'id. Maw'id. In, in, in the Hebrew, it's called Moad. 
And what does that mean? It means a date. So when you tell your girlfriend or your wife, uh, this coming weekend on Friday night, when a week is over, we're going to go out and we're going to have a date. We're going to have a good time, baby. We're going to celebrate our love. And so what happened is you are on a date. And so what happened, the whole week passed and you could not wait for that time. And now you're going with your wife and you look in her eyes and I see her green eyes right now. I'm going like, I love you, sweetheart. That's my girl, my Victoria. So what happened is, so I'm always looking for that date, just like the first time I met her. As long, and so, I, you know, God has those dates. And these called our appointed time. And God is releasing through those appointed time. Why are we talking about this? Because we need to know. Next play, please. And keep it there. What we're talking about here is God talking to humanity he said to us beginning from the end and the end from the beginning all of it and he drew the picture so we go to we go to uh all the way to Ur this is where Abraham was born you know the the story says you know they don't know who the father of Abraham is but we know his two brothers and we know that his father was a a god maker statue he made you know godet and gods you know and small like this from clay the whole system was made out of clay. Why? Because they worship the image of man. Everything that's created in the image of man. And that's where humanity rebelled against God. And God, that's why God sent Abraham out of there. Even when Nimrod threw him off the tower to kill him, the hand of God grabbed him and he did not die. So they had to let him go because they were afraid of him. So he, he marched all the way to a nation, you know, to place to looking for Salem to establish Jerusalem to establish the altar and as he he left over there what happened is he started changing everything with him and now what happened we know how everything started but then we move from the the tower of Babel from the clay system we move to Daniel to the book of Daniel and in the book of Daniel the word of God says you know there's a king his name is Nebuchadnezzar Nebuchadnezzar was having a dream and the dream has scared him so much. And, and so he asked his seers, he asked all the leaders, he said to them, I want you to tell me what the dream says. And I want you to tell me the dream and what, what it meaneth. What it meaneth to you, y'all. And so what happened, sorry. I speak, I'm from Southern Beirut, so I speak with Southern accents. <laughs> Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. stop it <laughs> so what happened is uh you know so uh he said well i'm gonna kill y'all if you don't tell me you're not leaving the house without your head with your head so what happened is daniel heard what happened he started fasting and praying and and god showed him the dream and what it means so he want he told uh you know he he told uh, one of the leaders he said Lead me to the king, I will give him the translation. So he said, Almighty King, God loved you so much that he showed you the end from the beginning. He said, as the gold, this is your kingdom. And God loved you so much that he showed you the beginning and this is you. But after you comes another, another kingdom, another Babylonian system. And that will be the Medes, Persia, you know, which is, he didn't tell him it was, but it became Persia, you know, they didn't know what the system is, but he said it'll be a silver, and it'll be, you know, another great, you know, empire, and after that will become another empire, and that was Greece later on, we found out, and that's the brass, and then what happened is the legs made out of steel, he said another empire, and then the feet would be made out of mix of two, and they'll be weakened, it'll be steel and clay. And, you know, the way that God teaches me, you know, uh, I get before God in intimacy. I sit before him and I ask God to teach me. I always, because I didn't have a daddy, I'm always talking to my daddy father. Because, you know, he became my first father uh, since my father let go of me when I was a little boy, six years old. And so what happened is he became my first, fa- my, my first father and now uh, I learn from him, and that is through intimacy. And when you really know the intimacy of God, then you know what the real love of God is. And, and so therefore what happened is, as I was sitting over there, 
and I was asking God, you know, about all this. So Daniel said, mighty king, when, when it comes to defeat and they are weak, and he said, the kingdom of God will come and hit the whole thing, the whole statue, and destroy it, destroy it into powder, and it will be scattered all over the earth. So the kingdom of God will be established. So when we look at all this, uh, as I start looking into the vision, you know, that God was showing me, the Lord led me to the EU and how the EU built the Tower of Steel. And, and, uh, that, is the, uh, and uh, that is the tower that now is speaking to, you know, uh, the, the European system and changing the whole culture. Europe doesn't want to change. That's why, you know, uh, that's why they're having all kinds of problems. So what happened, there is the symbol of the, uh, the European system is it's on their dollar. It's the harlot seated on the ox. Just like in the big book of Revelation, the ox symbolize the world and the harlot symbolize a nation. And so what happened, that, that harlot had a cup of wine in her hand and the whole world was drunk from that cup of wine. And so why am I telling you about all this? To let you know that the steel system, the iron system, is right there. We have come to that and we're still in that iron system. America birthed out of Europe. America has been mentioned in the Bible. America is part of the Bible. America will last to the end of time. Why? Because America, God created America to stand with Israel to the last days. It is, it, is, it, is, it is mentioned in the Bible, and I'll tell you where it's mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Daniel on the 4th of July, 4 and 7. Write it down. This is where God plucked the wings out of the lion, and he gave them to a man. I don't know if you call him Uncle Sam, but he gave them to a man. And that name, man became a nation. Why am I telling you all this? Because that nation, at the end of time, when God separated United States from England, the lion is a symbol of England, and now the eagle is a symbol of United States of America, the eagle is the highest system in God, you know, in, 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 you know, in God creation, in the animal world. And, and this is a whole teaching on that. It's so powerful. But so what happened is, uh, at the end, in the book of Revelations, he gave those wings to a nation called Israel. What happened? America stood with Israel to the end of the age. As Jesus said, I will be with you till the end of the age. So what happened, things about, I'm, I'm drawing this whole picture for you to see where we are in time. So now, when we see about 52 million Muslim, now they inhabit Europe. 52 million. And so what happened, now the clay system moved into the steel system. The two has mixed. This has been completed in the last four years. The completion of the system has come about us now. And so what happened, we need to expect the kingdom of God. I don't know what the time or the season next play, please, but God does. But I know something. We are crossing in a very unique time. And, and where are we going with all this? The word of God says we do not struggle against flesh and blood. Next plate, but against principality, power, and all the issues that we're dealing with. But Jesus Christ talked about three things. He said, in the last days, it will be like in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. It will be like in the days of Jezebel. And it will be like in the days, I mean, in, uh, like uh, days of Elijah and days of Noah. So all this together, when we see what happened is, we need to understand who is Islam and where Islam came from. And, you know, let me make something clear. Islam... And Muslims are not the same thing. The Muslims are subjugated to a religion of slavery, and they are captured into this, but they are yet, they are the sons of whom? Ishmael. They are not the sons of Islam. And when we tell that to the Muslim, when we educate them, as we're showing you, we're seeing Muslim coming to Christ very fast because their eyes, they are unveiled. And so what happened is, we need to understand where, where this Allah 
Akbar came from. You hear the Muslim, Allahu Akbar, <laughs> Allahu Akbar, <laughs> Allahu Akbar. <laughs> you know, I mean, I make a lot of noises. I'm gifted. And so therefore what happened is, in the book of Isaiah 14, 12 through 17, this is where we find out where Allah Akbar is. Because what Akbar means, it means A'la, meaning Be'al, meaning Be'al. Is the one who made himself higher. And what did God say to him? He said, Satan, you have reasoned in your heart. You have set your throne above the throne above, above the stars of God, and you have set your throne on where? On the Mount of Assembly. Where is the Mount of Assembly? Where Jesus Christ returned to be Lord. He said, how have you fallen, son of dawn, son of the morning star? Behold, I introduce the crescent and the falling star. That's a symbol of Islam. Baal, Baal is Akbar. What does it mean? He is the newer model, the bigger model, the better model, the everything model to replace what was. That's what it means when they say, oh, that my God is greater. So therefore, what happened is, this is very important. And we need to understand that these are fulfillment. We are walking this age of fulfillment. In the days of Je uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the same, uh, this, the, you know, and it's happening. We legalize homosexuality, and now we're talking about the uh, days of uh, Elijah. This is the days of Elijah. That's what we're seeing today. And we're seeing Jezebel, the system, and what was, you know, the, the most important things is offering sacrifices. What sacrifices? Your firstborn child. Your firstborn animal. To whom? To Molech. Who is Molech? When Baal called himself Allah, he called himself after that, you know, he is Malak, Malak, meaning he is the, the angels that he is inhabiting. He's the inhabitor. And what makes him so special is Satan used to stand before the throne of God. And what happened? His power was to hold the glory of God so it would not destroy the inhabitants. So he saw himself, God without him is weak and how do we know what he used to do he used to go before the throne back and forth back and forth back and forth because when god spoke to him in regard of job he said where have you been satan he said i was roaming the earth back and forth back and forth that's what he does you see as god spoke the light the light is exploding and it's becoming greater and mightier. And those that they're in God, they, they will see him and they will know him because they're expanding. But those in living in darkness, they will shrink and continue shrinking. All of it is happening. I'm sorry, I'm going so on rabbit trail. Lord, next one, please. You know, this is very important scripture. Because 2 Corinthians 4 and 1 through 7, it talks about the light of Christ, you know, the gospel. Because the God of this world has the blinded the unbelievers. Why did he blind them? Because he deceived them so he can steal their inheritance. So their inheritance is robbed from them. And now they have to become his slaves in order to fulfill his purpose through them. And so therefore what happened is... In this, he said that the God of this world has blinded the unbelievers, lest the gospel of good news of Jesus Christ, the image of God, come and shine on them. Well, who is that gospel? Who is that image? It is you. You are the image of God. Greater is he that is in me than he the one in the world. He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He said, greater things you will do than I, because I am with you. This is the double portion age that we're crossing into. This is very important. And the first thing that when we talk to the Muslim, we don't shy from our message. We tell them we are Christian, the follower of Yeshua, of Jesus Christ. Next page, please.
Okay, next page, please. The purpose that Abraham, God sent Abraham as in a great commission. And in that great commission, Jesus came to fulfill the great commission. He came and he gave the great commission and he said something very specific. He said, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, you know, and these promises are for the church as well. As long as we graft into the promise of Abraham and I, you know, Father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, this is your inheritance as well. I will make you a great nation. I'll make your name great. You shall be a blessing and you, you know, I will bless you and I will curse those who will curse you and your family will fill the earth. And this is where the church is today. And God is fulfilling his purpose through the Abrahamic covenant through the church. Next one, please. This is very important slide. This is about, this is the assembly of God, how the genealogy of Noah, how it went about and how Shem came about and how Abraham came right through that line of Shem because Shem is, this is where the, you know, he, he, he moved all the way to Jerusalem and that's where it's called today Shalom, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that is after Shem. Shem was given that name and Abraham was going to build the altar that God called him to build over there and now what happened, we see how he, uh, you know, he brought Lot with him, his brother, uh, son, and so he brought, it, brought him with him. Next slide, please. So now, when we look at all this, these are going, we're going somewhere with all this. You know, when we come to look at Abraham, we need to look at the, where is the blessings and where the promises, because when God spoke to Abraham, before he had Ishmael or Isaac, what did he say to him? Hola? And I will make your seeds blessing. I will do a lot. Of, we'll read that scripture in a second. But when we look at all this, this is very important. What happened in here, we found that Abraham had, you know, he married to a woman. Her name was Hagar. You know, his first wife was Sarah. And then he went to Hagar. And after Hagar died, he went to a woman, her name, Keturah. Keturah. That's where the black people have a lot of heritage to Keturah because she was black. So what happened is we need to understand that when he birthed Isaac, Isaac, you know, had a twin from his wife, one his name was Esau, and one his name is Jacob. And there was a fight between the two. And what was the fight about this? Both of them, they were, you know, Esau went to kill Jacob. Jacob was the weaker one, and Esau was the mightier one. He was a warrior. This is important. What was so unique about him? Esau was so unique because he hunted for trophies. And what did he do to his brother? He terrorized. He terrorized his brother in the womb and after he was born. His brother was afraid of him and he was running for his life. Because he said, he had terror over me. You know, he terrorized me. So what happened is, this is the the friction between the Adamites and the Israelites. And so what happened is when Esau lost his inheritance, he retaliated against his brother Jacob. And what did he do? He married into Ishmael. He married Ishmael's daughter. Why did he marry Ishmael's daughter? Because he doesn't want to be married to Israel. He rebelled and he was angry and hateful. 
Ishmael had the talent. He was a hunter. Both of them are hunters, but God gave the talent of hunting to Ishmael for what purpose? To survive. While this one, Esau, it was rebelliousness for trophy. He killed. He just went for the kill. So when he went to Ishmael, he said, Isaac stole the inheritance just like he stole my inheritance. Are you following me? This is when terrorism entered into the bloodline of Ishmael, the Ishmaelite. The first time in history. These are very important. Next slide, please. This is the order of Abraham. How is all this is happening? I'll speak with you later. <laughs> so he married Keturah. And he married Hagar. Who was Hagar to Abraham? Yes, 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 yes. But who was she? The Egyptian. When the Pharaoh took Sarah and he was about to sleep with her, God punished him. He sent an angel to torment him. When Pharaoh found the true story who Abraham is, and he knew that God of Abraham is very important to him, he had his favorite daughter. She was a princess of the Pharaoh. Her name was Hagar. And he said, it's better for you, my daughter, to live with Abraham than live in my palace because he is known by God and I'm not. She's a maid servant. She gave her royalty to become a maid servant. Listen, people, God is doing something here. So now we see the order of Ishmael and we see where Kidar, this is where Muhammad came from. The prophet of Islam. Then we look at Keturah's son. These are the Sunnis that came from Hagar and Ishmael. And these are, they came through mothers. All these came through mothers. But through one seed. These are the Shia. This is Iran. This is Saudi Arabia. That's where the animosity is still clashing between them. They are killing each other. This is even before Islam. So, but what happened is Ishmael and Jacob had a relationship. I'm sorry, Ishmael and Isaac had a relationship. So, let's go from here. Let's leave this here. Next slide, please. This is very important. These are all made servant. This is the order of Jesus Christ from Abraham all the way by 14 years, you know, from one generation, 14 generation, that is, from, you know, 14 generation, 14 generation, 14 generation, all together, now Jesus Christ became the fulfillment. And uh, I, I had to put that slide because it was important. Next slide, please. God held Ishmael inheritance. God never gave his Ishmael his inheritance. Right? Okay, let's go through it. So, who is Ishmael? We know Hagar. She was going, you know, one day she ran away from her mistress. And as she was running away, what happened? Angel of the Lord was sent to her. We're going to go beyond five. Angel of the Lord spoke to her. Is that all right? Okay. I just want to make sure. Is that all right, Pastor? Okay. So angel of the Lord said, he said, where are you going? You know, Hagar, she said, I'm running away from my, my mistress. 
He said, go back. You're pregnant, and your son, given name by God of heaven and earth, shall be called Ishmael. What does that mean? When he cries, God hears. When Ishmael cry, God hears. God knew what's going to happen to Ishmael before Ishmael went away. Then the second time we come, we, we come to understand that in uh, Genesis, God spoke to Abraham and he said to him, let the lad and his mother go. What was? He didn't give them inheritance. He gave them a jug of water and some bread. After the bread and water left, what happened is the baby was dying. He was 13 years old. Remember, number 13 is very unique. He was 13 years old and he was dying. And his mother turned away from him and ran away. She left him in the bush and she said, I could not look upon the face of the lad as he is dying. And when the lad started crying out loud, God spoke to Hagar. He said, Hagar, why is the lad crying? God heard. And so what happened? She said, there's no food. There's no water. He said, behold. He opened her eyes for the first time to see the water. Today, this water is called Zemzem. That water is still coming from the depth of the desert. And nobody knows where it's coming from. Still birthing until this day. Then he said, shook the tree and fruit came upon her. Why God want to save Ishmael? God used Ishmael throughout history to, in, in history, there's two stories told to us. It happened only twice in the Bible. The first time is, we see it is Ishmael preceded his brother Isaac. He was born before his brother, only to highlight his brother. Just as John the Baptist was born before Jesus Christ, only to point to Jesus Christ. Are you following me? This is only twice in the biblical history. So what happened is God brought Ishmael specifically to bring his brother to his inheritance. Because Isaac also lost the inheritance. How, how, how did that happen? When, when, when Moses was cast into the desert, who saved Moses' life? It was an Arab. It was an Ishmaelite. He married into them. They saved his life. The second big bang in the Bible. Where did it happen? Joseph is about to be killed and he thrown into the well. And who saved Joseph's life? The Ishmaelite. They took him into his inheritance to fulfill the promise to save who? The Jews. Move. So what happened is Ishmael and Isaac were born in the same tent. Circumcised in the same tent. Buried their father together. God created Ishmael to cause his brother Isaac jealousy. What kind of jealousy? To bring him to Christ. And we're going to discover that in the Bible. You're going to go like, well, you're going to have to prove that. Come on. Next slide. So Ishmael lived in Hejaz. And that's where Saudi Arabia, you know, UAE, you know, Qatar, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, he lived over there. And that's where the oil is. But he was tormented Bedouin at that time. He was just roaming the desert at that time. But who did Ishmael worship? He worshiped the God of his father, Jehovah, Yahweh. He did not worship any other God. And one day, Abraham went to visit his son, and his son was not prosperous. And what did he say to him? He was not there. He told, he told uh, Sarah, he said, I will not come out of the camelback. And when he came out, he visited his, his son and he said, who are you to the woman? The woman was a Midianite. He said, tell your husband 
his threshold is broken, is not tried. And tell him the old man with white hair came and told me this. So what happened is when, when Ishmael came home and he, his wife was Midianite, what happened? He, she told him what he said, and he let her go. And he went to his father's house and he married an Israelite. His sons were born out of an Israelite. His 12 sons were born out of an Israelite. His father came to see him the second year. And when he saw that she was, he was married to an Israelite, he blessed his son. And that's when his son took dominion. And the whole place was prospered over there when he married into an Israelite. That is the grafting that the church came to do. God says, I came to make the two men as one. God the son said, I came to, to make the two men one, Jews and Gentiles. Well, I'm telling you here, Ishmael is not outside of this. Many of us as church, we look at it as the Jews and the Christians. <coughs> Big <coughs> Why? Because God has an inheritance for Ishmael and all the maid servant of Keturah. All those are sons and daughters of promise of an inheritance. Because they have not received the inheritance yet. Let me introduce you to Ishmael. A father one day let go his son into the wilderness. His brother stayed home. The son went into the world. And he had parte. And one day famine came about. And people were starving. And famine was taking place. And he was living in a pig hole. And this lad thought to himself. He said. If I go to my father's house. I can live as a servant. Because the servant lived better than what I'm doing today. Why? Because his mother was a servant. He knew that he was a servant. Who is his mother? Hagar. His dad did not give him the true inheritance. But his dad looked for him every day from the hill, Pastor. And he waited for him. His dad was looking in the distance every day. And one day he saw him from coming from a distance. That's how Kamal came. I came thrashed out, scarred, filled with all kind of scum. I didn't have, I didn't know, as they say in the South, come here from Sikkim. I didn't know anything. And he welcomed me. And when he saw his son, the word of God says he ran. And he embraced him. We're coming to the time of embracement, and we got to see this. And when he embraced him, what did he do? He gave him his inheritance. Cloak of what? Sandal of peace. And a signet ring of what? Royal priesthood. You are a royal priesthood. Without signet ring, if you're an ambassador, you hold the signet ring of the living God. And when his brother saw him, he said, what are you doing? He said, oh, kill a fattened calf. We're going to celebrate. What celebration? When they killed, you know, fattened calf, small one, it's a wedding celebration. He was wedded the day to the promise. He was wedded that day to the promise. So we need to understand that the promise that God wed him to, he fulfilled him and he brought him. And he went from a servant to what? To a son. I'm getting goosebumps. If you're not getting one, come and touch it right here. Get one. I don't need to shave tomorrow. Are, are you meditating on this? And so now what happened, what happened to his brother? The word of God says his brother get jealous. Why did he get jealous? Because both of them are people of the law. Sharia law and what's the Hebraic? 
Zabur, Torah, you know, all of it, you know, so all of it is right there. And he's going like, how is it possible that my brother is receiving this? He is jealous of his brother. Ishmael will save Isaac one more time. When they see the Muslim are coming to Christ and they start defending Israel and where the Israeli star on their lapel. They're going to go, what possessed you? Oh, his name is the Holy Spirit. That's what possessed me. So uh, I was talking to General one time. I said, he said, why do you love Israel? I said, because he was Jewish. I said, because, uh, you know, America and Israel, two nations that I hated the most. Today I wear them in my heart. I said, because my Christ is Jew. And he told me to love his people. They're on his heart. And he said, your God said that? I said, yes, that's why I don't want to kill you anymore. I want to protect you from people like me. He said, go do what you need to do, my brother. He said, I love your message. You know, I said, why don't you come to Christ? He said, when he speak to me like you, I will come to him. Next slide, please. Very fa Sorry, guys, I'm taking you from lunch. Ishmael was a wandering man. The next one, he did not arrive yet, but he's about to arrive to his father's house. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. I'll talk about all those. I'm just trying to get in time. It's very important to know, we talked about Moad, the time of the Lord. We're coming to the time of the Lord. Uh, I'll come back to this slide. Go, back, you know, move forward one slide, please. Move forward one slide, please. Again. That's why I need a clicker. <laughs> Dreams and visions. I have a movie out there. It's called Dreams and Visions. That's how Muslims are coming to Christ. I have a book out there. It's called 10 Amazing Muslim Stories. That's how the Muslim are coming to Christ. You know, and uh, these are very important educate, uh, educational products, and I'll talk to, uh, to you about them later. This is a phenomenon that's taking place. Why? Because God prophesied it, and he spoke about it. Next slide, please. Is God running special on Muslims? Yes, he is. Next slide, please. Every hour of every day, 667 Muslims come into Christ. 16,000 every day, 6 million every year. Iran today is the fastest growing underground church. Iran. Indonesia, the biggest Muslim nation on earth. Almost 50% of Indone uh, Indonesia today is they have converted. That Indonesia has to implement Sharia so they can stop the conversion next slide please let's go one more slide let's go one more slide what I, the time is really coming closer and well let's go one more slide another these you know this is word of seminar that I do and I, I, I thought I need to impart this on the East Coast. And you are the first church that I imparted to on the East Coast. And I believe this, uh, this message will, will, will move like fire on the East Coast. Uh, next slide, please. This is very important, what I'm about to show you. So, Book Joel. <laughs> he said, and afterward, meaning... In that day, after time passed, in the Moed time, in the appointed time, I will pour out my spirit on what? All flesh, all people, all ethnos, ethnicities. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men and will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And even on your maid servant. Both man and woman, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Woo! 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for touching me. Woo. I was part of that poor, but I was, I was in the first mold. I came out 13 years out of my Muslim closet. And what happened? Why, did he, why am I sending you this? This is very important. Because this sequence at the time, he said, because if you go further, he said, the moon will turn into blood and the sun will turn into darkness. And that sequence will not happen until 850 years from now again in that sequence. This is a one-time event that happened right now in 2014, uh, 15 and, uh, and 2000, uh, 2014 and 15. And next time it will happen in the next millennium. The next millennium. So what do we do? He said, when this come about like this, know that the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord is, come, is nigh. We have crossed into a time and the only things that's standing between, there's 6,600 groups that they are unreached. These group, the Christians have reached every other group in the world, except when it came to the Muslim, they said, I'm not going to do it. They're going to cut my head off. Do you know who you are? What's your name? Your name is Ananias. Let me introduce you to yourself. The Ananias is when he lay his hand on the soul, he's going to turn to Paul. When God spoke to Ananias, he said, isn't that the man who kills people like me? He's terrorizing us. He said, go. Fear God given us 360, do not fear for every day of the year. So God can accomplish his calling. And now the church is holding back because they look at the Muslim as germs. They look at them as terrorists. But if God sees them in different eyes and he said, I'm having an open door and the gate of hell could not prevail against you. And I will be with you until the end of age. And all these things must happen. And I'm sending you. And you are my ambassadors. You are my instrument. You are my mouthpiece. And I will do greater things through you than I did myself. What is holding us from moving forward to accomplish the will of God? Let me introduce you to Satan's strategy. Fear. Deception. First, he deceived the Christian. Second, he put fear in them. That is spirit of terrorism. You know what terrorizes hell? When you come to a Muslim and tell him, I love you. I want you to be my brother. Let me help you. They go like, Bleh. what happened to this person? Because now what they have, that facade is no longer working. Love conquers all fear. <laughs> And if the church is not designed yet to reach the Muslim, we need to start thinking about putting units, start teaching how to go to the heart of the Muslim, how to go psychology, how to... I was in Michigan preaching, and this Somali guy came to me, and he said, you're talking about us trash. I said, no, I'm talking about you good, my brother. I said, if you hear everything, you heard that I'm saying you... I love you, you love me, we are a happy family. <laughs> yeah, I have grandchildren. <laughs> and then, sorry. And so he, he, he said to me, he said, why? I said, because you're in God's purpose. You are not born to be a Muslim. You are born to be the son of Abraham. This is your heritage and this is your inheritance. I said, Muhammad is the second place where the spirit of terror came through Islam. And I will talk about that some other time. How it came to him in the cave and what happened. But all this, all this. Get the first class this morning and get the second class. I call them classes because these are teaching. And I was never been teacher in my life. Next slide, please. Something happened in the United States of America. You have not had this president by mistake. 
because this president is championing the church and he's going to open the gates for American missionaries to go worldwide and he's going to protect them by military. This is going to happen and it's happening already. And so what happened, this happened a hundred years ago in 1918, except it went the same place, but exited out of Florida. This is a sign for the United States of America because the door that it's opened, it opened several things to come. We had Hurricane Irma, Harvey, and now we have this, you know, uh, Nate, and all of them coming through the same thing. We need to understand the time because God is affecting the celestial. He's affecting the stronghold. He's affecting the meta metabolic. He's affecting everything, even the geography in America. When the sun went through, many of the river went the opposite ways. Many of the fish start going the other way. The, the, the chicken laid eggs. We passed one day in one day. We passed. Time is accelerating under our own eyes, and we have not seen it. And so what happened is all this happening and the explosion of the sun, it was exploding with the ray that we have not seen was coming out from the corona. It was going over 12 million miles. Why? Because God shielded the earth with the moon so they can, there's a war in heaven. There's a war in heaven and God is attacking the second heaven where the stronghold of Satan and now Michael and his angels are coming through, and we are seeing the Muslim crying out like never before. Ah, and God is hearing them, and they come into Christ. But America must wake up and not mo uh, lose its heritage. Next slide, please, and we're stopping. Luke 21 25, there will be signs in the sun, moon, and the stars on the earth. Nation will be, will be in anguish and per perplexed. At the roaring and the tossing of the sea. We are seeing this phenomenon happening all over the world. But God gave it to America specifically and uniquely. Let me tell you who you are. Your heritage. You are not born like any other country. You are born by the hand of God. Just other nation born like you. Israel. Two nations on earth birthed by God's hand. You are the bread basket of the world. And the globalism the globalists want to destroy America. If they can destroy America, they can destroy the world. But the church purpose is not done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Put the last slide again. The gospel must be first be preached to all nations before the coming of the Lord. My house shall be called a house of prayers for all nations. Ha. Sorry. I love to show off my God. And he loved to show off. And, and I'm sorry, guys, put up with my English and everything. But thank you for listening to me. Before you leave, there's few things left out there. We have these. This is, if you're a reader, this is one of the best books to read. They'll tell you about the Islamic agenda. And when we talk about Islamic agenda, we're talking about Islamism. What is Islamism? The spirit of terrorism. Who is the spirit of terrorism? The Muslim Brotherhood, the one they recruited me when I was young. This is how the Muslim are, you know, this is an amazing, this is how we defeated Russia, you know, and communism by uh, report of team B1. This is B2, it's about Islam. This is about how Muslim are coming to Christ. These are the Islamic doctrine. Like we said, Sirah, Hadith, and Quran. They make what's so-called Sharia, the Islamic constitution. Then you have doctrine of slavery, doctrine of Christian and Jews, and doctrine of women. Why they have to kill the women? Because that is what the book of God says in Genesis, that Satan came after the woman. And that woman still, you know, that's what the war is. And there's another one, it's called the foundation of Islam. If you're going to go out and you're not going to get anything, get the foundation of Islam and Sharia. These books will teach you a whole lot. And today we have those on special. This is General Jerry Boykin and I. We wrote this book together, A Wake Up Call for America. And this is my biography. They're on special today if you want to buy them. Today what I taught about, a lot of the teaching that came from this unveiling. This is six study, the ugly truth. And this is six study, the beautiful truth. These are DVDs. I don't sell CDs. This is how they have invaded America and taken America from the top, mountaintop. 
This is how we take America back and how we engage the Muslims. This is on special, usually 60. Today is $40 for both of them. If you don't know what the church purpose is, God did not create a church. God created a parliament. Let me introduce to you the ecclesia, God glory on earth. You are his glory. Star Spangled Sharia, this is the, the, the Islamic uh, constitution, Sharia, to replace the American constitution. They have registered the party and they have declared the law of the party to replace the American constitution. These are amazing books, a bridge Korean. The Abridged Koran is, in, these are teaching, uh, the best teaching out there in the market. I did not carry those because I just like to carry them. I carry them because they are the best out there. This, when you read this and you read the Koran after you read this, you will know exactly what the Koran is saying and doing. This is God Army Rising uh, by a friend and a pastor. His name is Mark Cowart. He's friend of Pastor Ron as well and Sister Denise. And what happened, he is an amazing man. This is a great book to know. What's your move, God, and what is your calling for the last days? This one here is dreams. We talked about it earlier, how God is appearing to the Muslim. And this is about 30 languages in Islamic languages, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the Bible written in all those. And it has teaching on the Bible and who is Jesus to the Muslim, where he is in the Quran and what so have you. Burn as many copies as you can and give it to the Muslims. That's how they come into Christ. This is America, the beautiful General Jerry Boykin and myself how we can lose America in the next five years if we don't do what we have to do. And if you want to understand what is, who is the enemy behind everything, this one is about the globalism, the one world order, and how they are using the Muslim to destroy the world, you know, and, and you know, hurting the Muslim all the way to the forefront to introduce one world order. This is my, uh, my movie, Red Chair. You know, how I came to know Christ. It's a testimony, 40 minutes. And this is 19 classes, uh, 19 teachers, you know, uh, Bill Federer, myself, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and many other, General Jerry, you know, all these guys over there. And uh, just, you know, it's some of the best teaching, you know, there is, you know, and uh, I think there's only, and David Barton and his son, that's some, I think there's only one unit outside, and this is the last unit here. So anyhow, with all this now that I have terrorized you enough, I must let you go. And it's hard to say goodbye, because this man treated me like a son, even though I'm close to his age. And this woman loved me unconditionally. You should see my hotel was filled with. All kind of love. I'm going like, nobody treated me like this. Why would they do this? Because they're generous. Because they're real. Fill this house. It's shameful for this just be eaten by this. This should be ten times bigger. You know, I call your pastor to learn from him stuff. You have a tree. Holy Father, we thank you. We bless you as about to depart, depart from here. I lose my blessing and my peace. Father God, help us to be wise as serpents, innocent as doves, and have heart after your own heart to reach for the Muslims and to let them know about their identity. Father, fill our baskets with plenty. Father, we understand it's not what we have in a basket, but what you put in a basket. So, Father God, we ask you to give us the Ishmaelite and the sons of Keturah. That our basket will be filled with the souls that you've been crying out for. We bless you, Father. We thank you for blessing this nation, blessing this house. And bless every person that they are here. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, amen.